filling up the UTV tank sprayer. Uh, we are getting ready to do a lot of uh, herbicide application on a piece of ground that we've done a bunch of timber stand improvement work on. We've done a lot of edge feathering uh, and about 60 acres worth of TSI. So we've got a good trail system throughout the property so we can get water around it using this tank in the back of the UTV, but then we got to burn some boot leather. So we're going to be using backpack sprayers four gallons at a time and hiking through the timber and spraying all of the cut stunts and all the invasives that have sprouted out. So on this property, we've got basically four stands of timber uh, that we just completed timber stand improvement work in. And they range anywhere from 12 to 18 acres in size. Um, they're scattered around different parts of this large property. And each of those four stands has totally different composition. Uh, the stand that I'm in right now is a, a lot of cherry. Um, it's a lot of elm. It's a lot of locust, hedge, and um, it's not a very good quality stand. Black cherry is about the, the highest value species here, either for wildlife or uh, for future timber production. So that is primarily the stand that we're managing from, from a forestry uh, standpoint. But really what we've achieved in this stand is uh, we've eliminated about 40 or 50 percent of the canopy and we're just kind of hitting the restart button. So we're letting a whole lot more sunlight come in, hit the floor, and we're gonna enjoy a, a flush of new growth that's gonna come up from that. A lot of forbs in here. Uh, it's basically just a, a native food plot that we didn't ever have to plant. And uh, as time goes on, there's gonna be another layer of succession that's gonna come up. The woody stem plants will take over and, and it's just kind of a roll of the dice what we're gonna get. There's not, not having a great seed source here for, for acorns or I, we're not expecting that we're gonna get you know, a big stand of, of white oaks that'll come up out of this in 20 or 30 years. But each time we come through and move through this body of timber again, if it looks like we need to, we're gonna hit that restart button again. We're gonna keep whatever was good, we're gonna sift it out again and whatever uh, isn't good, we're gonna knock out of here and we'll just, just kind of have to keep doing that until eventually 20, 30, 40 years from now after you've done that enough times, it develops into something that you would actually be glad to have and call a quality stand of timber. With the goal being to just open the canopy in this timber, uh, we don't necessarily need to create a lot of structure. So a lot of the trees that we're killing this stand, we're just girdling. We're only cutting about uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter maybe through the surface of the tree, ringing it as some people call it, uh, just to cut through the cambium layer. And then we come back after we're done cutting through all these trees and we're applying the herbicide directly into the cut. So we can leave a lot of these trees standing and they just die in place and they're gonna eventually come to the ground but they'll just do it one limb at a time as they rot away. We're gonna mix, this is triclopyr concentrate. It's a 61% active ingredient and we're gonna mix, um, per the label, they say about 20 to 30% uh, chemical in your solution. So if you were gonna mix up 100 gallons, you're putting 20 to 30 gallons of chemical in there for cut stump treatment. Now make sure you're reading the label because if you're Treating uh, timber any other way other than just low pressure application and just spot spraying directly on to cut stumps, you're going to dilute it a lot more than that. You're only going to mix probably uh, a couple of quarts per acre, one to two quarts maybe per acre. But when you're walking through timber that you've done TSI in, uh, you, can't, you can't equate it that way. You can't, because no two patches of timber are the same. Some pieces, even in this, on this single property, uh, where we did four different sections totaling about 60 acres of TSI. Um, some of those were cutting maybe 150 or 200 stems per acre and some of them were probably cutting five or 600 stems per acre. So you've got a whole lot more to treat in some areas than you do others. So when we're mixing it in a backpack sprayer like this, um, we're gonna go a little bit on uh, the, the conservative side. We're gonna mix probably uh, about a quart and a half to two quarts in a four gallon backpack sprayer. 
and um, you know, 25% would basically be you're mixing one gallon of herbicide in a four gallon backpack sprayer. But uh, we're not putting it out at a low enough volume, so we're gonna do a little bit more diluted. Using a backpack sprayer, so we're either gonna use a uh, flat fan nozzle or a direct spray nozzle that's adjustable that we can kind of tweak down into a really fine stream. Um, what we don't want is something that's gonna make really small droplet sizes. Uh, because if we're making too small a droplet sizes, it's going to be prone to drift and we're going to end up killing plants that we didn't aim to kill. So uh, we've had really good success with mixing it, the solution somewhere around that uh, 10 to 15 on the high side, maybe 20% chemical uh, in, in your solution. And we're adding a little bit of a surfactant to it, just something to break the water tension. Most of this stand is dominated with sugar maples. and. It's likely that either there was a pretty heavy timber harvest through here at one point in time and because they're so fast growing they just took off and dominated the stand or maybe this was pastured timber it's hard to say you know livestock pressure would also do it but at some point there was a major shift and the canopy was left wide open and these fast growing sugar maples just took off it kind of leaves a park-like effect so when you look through here you notice that the ground cover the understory uh, waist high and below is, is almost barren compared to the other stands of timber that we've been in. There's very little vegetation here. Uh, there's no oak regeneration. There's not much hardwood to speak of at all. So we're cutting a probably about 60 uh, or maybe a little over 60 percent of the trees in this stand and just because they're so thick with them. That's not to say that you know maple is necessarily a bad hardwood tree uh, or a species that you wouldn't want for timber production but um, historically it hasn't had a lot of value and it's kind of just a recent trend that people are using it for cabinetry and flooring and things like that. Long term you're better to manage for those species that have always had value and likely will come back and won't just be a trend that'll pass and you'd be left standing with a forest full of trees that, that don't have a lot of value. Um, sugar maple is a valuable browse species for deer so when it's you know six foot and less they hit it pretty aggressively especially in late winter but they're so shade tolerant that they just kind of smother out everything else so we're going to kill the vast majority of them we'll leave a handful here and there but there's much better quality trees here that we'd like to be trying to propagate this is a, a good example this is the second stand that we did TSI in, and this is actually a really, really good quality stand of timber. It's, uh, it's not even aged like we'd really like to see, but the, what we've got here in species composition is what we're managing for overall in most of the other stands. What we see here behind us is a big, fully mature, beautiful white oak tree. Um, and right here all around us, if we, we were walk a circle within about 30 or 40 foot radius around this tree, there's dozens and dozens of trees in here that are uh, anywhere from two to five inch diameter white oaks and they're all offspring off of that tree. So we'd love to see some that are 10, 12, and 16 inch and all of that sort of thing, but at least we have the oak regeneration here. Eventually we're going to lose this white oak tree uh, and that'd be an absolute tragedy if we didn't have all these youngsters here that are ready to replace it and take advantage of that sunlight. Basically what we've done in this stand is just move through it and uh, selectively thin some of the uh, locusts that are pretty sporadic through here. There's a little bit of elm and we're not killing all the elm. It's not a bad thing for them to have some competition amongst all these other white oaks. We don't want to ma manage for a monoculture of white oak either. I mean as good as that tree is to have, if we were to get oak wilt here in this patch and it wiped them all out then we got nothing. So you know we're also looking for some northern red oaks. Um, black walnut and wherever we have some of those we're actually going to lean towards favoring that tree a little bit more than some of the other uh, white oaks that are all around it because we need that diversity overall to maintain value and because diversity is always good for wildlife.
a place I go 